Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to IACAC's Virtual College Exploration for All Illinois Students. I want to just remind everybody how to ask a question. You can use a Q&A button to type a question, and that'll go directly to our presenter, Courtney, from the University of Tennessee. To our participants, your camera and microphone are off. We cannot see you or hear you. Please sign up for more sessions there. At last count, there was almost 400 of these different sessions. They're available at IACAC.org to sign up for future sessions. And every session is recorded. So this session and all the other sessions can be viewed on the website, IACAC.org. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce your presenter, Courtney from the University of Tennessee. Thank you. Hello, my name is Courtney and I am the Midwest Regional Representative for the University of Tennessee and I too live in Illinois, so I'm excited to be talking to my Illinois students. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and I have for you guys today a presentation that's going to talk about Knoxville, uh, the University of Tennessee and how to apply to become a student. So you guys can go ahead and, and use that chat and Q&A feature and I will answer questions at the end and then we will kind of go from there. So, okay, so yes, the University of Tennessee. We are located in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is Eastern Tennessee. So from the Chicagoland area, we're about an eight hour drive. So not too terribly far. We do have an airport. So we service from O'Hare to Knoxville daily and the flight's about an hour and a half. So it's not too bad. And our airport is 15 minutes from campus. So Knoxville to the Chicagoland area is very accessible. We do have flights from the Peoria area to Nashville um, where you can do like I do and I hopped Peoria to O'Hare to, to Knoxville. So there are definitely opportunities and access for you to get to Knoxville easily. And again, it's only an eight hour drive. So in this image, I always like to point out the sun sphere because you'll see that Wait, image a lot. We can't see your screen yet. I apologize. We oh, cannot see no. your screen. Oh, thank you for telling me. Yeah, it says I'm sharing. Hmm, let's try it again. Thank you for telling me that. Okay, share screen. Here we go. Okay, now can you see it? Yeah? Yep, got it. Well done. <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, let's always get in troubleshoot. Okay, well, now you can see the sun sphere. So we're located in Knoxville, Tennessee, and here's the sun sphere that was built for the 1982 World's Fair. So it's something, again, you'll see in images about Knoxville and UT, and it's downtown, not too far from campus, and you can go up in it and look out through Knoxville and see the Smoky Mountains. So now onto the Smoky Mountains. Knoxville's been coined a nature-loving, adventure-seeking, artsy kind of town, and I think that that's so true to the definition of Knoxville. So we're located less than 45 minutes from the Great Smoky Mountains, which is the most visited national park in the United States. So you have access to the Great Smoky Mountains. The Tennessee River is located right along campus, so there's plenty of water activities if you're interested in kayaking or paddle boarding. And in some of these images here, you can see um, the rowing team, and that's that river is going right across Nayland Stadium um, and campus. We have students paddle boarding, and this is at our Fort Dickerson Quarry, which is less than a six minute drive from campus. So not only are we accessible to Illinois, but once you're in Tennessee and on campus, you're accessible to all this outdoor adventure. Mountain biking is very popular down in Eastern Tennessee, and there's also tons of greenway paths. So that can take you downtown into different parks and recreational areas. We're also going to artsy kind of town. So we have cool three little downtown districts that you can go and spend some time in the evenings or on the weekends. One is Market Square, one is Historic Gay Street, and then Old City. And these little areas are awesome places for restaurants, great eating, eclectic shops, and different little artsy things to do. Uh, there's a glass blowing business down there. There's some good ice cream and sweet treats. So there's lots of little places you can do that's very accessible to campus. It is walkable, but we do have a trolley system and then also a, a public bus transit system on campus as well. So there's lots of activities for you. We have a food, bunk, uh, food truck uh, bank area that hosts different food trucks and vendors to come. There's lots of music venues that students can enjoy live music. Um, and then of course, campus itself hosts a lot of different events. 
This is an important slide, uh, I feel, because this is going to highlight everything that we have to offer students, right? And not everything, but this is showing you businesses and organizations that are headquartered in Knoxville, Tennessee. So in Knoxville, students have access to these businesses, whether it be for job shadowing or internships, just good networking opportunities. So I won't read them to you, but you can see them listed there. One big one that I really want to point out is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory is less than 30 minutes from campus and we co-manage the national lab. So our students have access to a national lab. And I will tell you that we are fewer than 10 universities that have that capability to work alongside a national laboratory. So something we take a lot of pride in. So students have opportunities for research and networking opportunities within that, which is great if you're looking to go on to grad school and of course a great resume booster. Some other businesses listed there, uh, I think we're all familiar with maybe Discovery Inc, HGTV, Travel Channel, Food Network. So they are headquartered in Knoxville, Tennessee. We have the Pilot Corporation and AC Entertainment. So again, awesome access to students looking at internship opportunities, networking opportunities, really growing kind of your, your interest and your palette there. Okay, so now let's talk about the University of Tennessee and campus. So here you'll see, and now that you can actually see it, here you'll see an image of our campus. So there's Nayland Stadium. On the other side of Nayland Stadium is the Tennessee River. And then I always, again, like to point out there's the Sun Sphere. So in ratio from our campus to downtown, it is not that far. Tennessee is the flagship institution of the state of Tennessee. We were founded in 1794, and we are the first public university west of the Appalachian Mountains. So we take a lot of pride in our history. Um, we are the volunteers, and we take a lot of pride in that as well. We are a land-grant university and a Research One Carnegie classification. So again, Research One is at the top. So we take a lot of pride in the fact that we produce great research. We've got that relationship with the Oak Ridge National Lab, which I mentioned there that we co-manage. We also have the UT Space Institute in Middle Tennessee uh, that works alongside for aerospace, mechanical, chemical, mathematics, um, all sorts of our science programs and STEM programs have the capability to work with the UT Space Institute. Um, and we do have 10 astronauts that graduated from UT. We are Division I and we are part of the SEC, the Southeastern Conference for Athletics. And our campus is just under a thousand acres. I don't know if that means much to you, but I always like to share that. Um, you can kind of Google other universities if you visited and see the ratio. So we're a mid-sized university, not too overwhelmingly big and not too small, um, but you'll definitely get to know your way around campus. So a few numbers for you. We do have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. So even though we're a mid-sized university serving over 24,000 undergraduate students and total enrollment of over 30,000, we still have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio and 71% of our classes are 30 students or less. 84% of our graduates report that they are employed or within graduate school within six months of graduation. And we do have a great retention rate of about 87% from first year returning students. We have over 360 academic programs, which I will go into a little bit more detail next. So for our undergraduate students, we have nine colleges that you guys can fall under. First, we have the Herbert College of Agriculture, and that is, again, being a land-grant institution, kind of our homegrown school. We have a veterinarian school, so a lot of students will choose animal science in our pre-vet program. We've got wildlife and fishery sciences, environmental options, and so on. Our College of Architecture and Design house, houses architecture, and then graphic design, interior architecture, as well as landscape architecture. So there are options for you within our architecture and design program and that is very hands on a lot of internship opportunities within that and a lot of co collaboration between the departments. Our College of Arts and Sciences is our largest college and that's going to host the majors that don't quite fit into the other colleges. So here you're going to see as I have listed anthropology, which does have a forensics option, which is very popular neuroscience, our School of Music. But this is where you're going to see our biology, so our pre-med programs, pre-track programs, psychology, sociology, uh, geology, geography, those programs are going to fall within our College of Arts and Sciences, again our largest college. The Haslam College of Business is just that, our College of Business, a very popular well-known college on campus. 
We are nationally ranked for supply chain management. We also house business analytics and statistics, marketing, economics, finance, management, um, all those majors. And there are a lot of good options for MBA options and integrated programs and master's programs within the College of Business. Many students do internships and our College of Business does a great job of collaborating with the Career Development Center and they have their own department as well within the college at helping students with internship and network opportunities. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about the College of Communication and Information. Of course, our College of Communication. So we've got communication majors, we've got journalism and electronic media, and one of our well known uh, ranked programs public relations. And there's also information sciences within this program. So lots of different opportunities for students uh, starting freshman year at getting engaged in maybe writing or editing um, journalism, uh, videography, things like that, depending on what aspect you're interested in. Uh, starting freshman year, you can have opportunities of engaging with that. Our College of Education, Health and Human Sciences. So the College of Education, Health and Human Sciences is going to have our teaching program. So our teaching certificate is housed within the college. Audiology and speech pathology, so speech communication. We do have a master's program in that program um, as well. So students can get some hands-on experience prior to that if they're looking at staying on and doing our master's program. And there is a clinic on campus. Hospitality and tourism fall into this college as well as kinesiology and nutrition. Our Tickle College of Engineering another very well known program with UT, um, houses all of our engineering and computer science programs. UT is most well known for nuclear engineering and we are in the process of building a new facility that will open up fall 2021. Biomedical engineering is a great option for some of my pre-med students and you'll definitely get some work with the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Aerospace, computer engineering, we also have computer science, uh, chemical, um, so there's lots of different opportunities for you within our College of Engineering. The College of Engineering does offer co-op and internship opportunities that are paid. It is not a graduation requirement, but a lot of our students choose to participate in that. Our College of Nursing. College of Nursing is just that, our nursing program. We do offer a direct admit nursing program. So with the nursing program, when you apply to UT, you will put that you're interested in nursing, and then a separate application um, substance will come up for you to complete for that. Uh, so we are direct admit and we do have deadlines, which I'll talk about a bit later, but you want to make sure you meet our regular admission deadline of December 15th. Our College of Social Work is um, houses just social work program. It is an awesome program, very good at getting you hours and community service and engagement. And they have a really cool program I always like to share. There is a certificate option within veterinary science. So our students study the relationship between humans and animals. I always like to point out that certificate program just pretty much because I think it's really cool and it's pretty unique to UT. Okay, so that's a little bit about our programs. Again, we offer over 360, so that was not an exhaustive list, but those were just a few highlights and you can see all of our programs online. I would also encourage you to check out our visit page, which I'll show at the end, because academic departments will have information sessions that you can attend virtually. Okay, so that was the academic side, a little bit about the student experience. We do have the Center for Career Development and Academic Success on campus, and they are very engaging at getting you involved in resume critiques, job shadow, job fairs, they have career coaches. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities for you to engage within the, the Career Center, and I strongly encourage you to do that to help with that network. As I will kind of talk about, um, you know, I mentioned networking a lot, but the cool thing is we have a very large alumni network and our Chicago chapter is a very large chapter with over 1600 members of the alumni chapter. So getting involved in that career development center, working and networking, I know they work alongside our alumni center as well. So if you're looking at maybe doing an internship or coming back home for the summer or looking at returning home in the end for a job, there's opportunities there that they could help work alongside with you on. All of our incoming freshmen will be part of a VOL success team. So each student is going to get an academic advisor, an academic success coach, and then a one stop counselor. So you will have three people on your success team to help answer questions, help navigate your first year, navigate UT. So we really just want you to feel welcomed and know that you have the potential to be very successful on our campus. We do require all of our first year students to live on campus. This year, obviously, there were some exceptions with COVID, but hopefully we will get back to a little bit more of a regular year next year. So we do require all of our students to live on campus for one year. 
we have 13 residence halls and four housing styles. So depending on what you're interested in, you can kind of choose and navigate what you're interested in for styled housing. So we have a room that shares a bathroom with just you and your roommate. So kind of a solo suite room. We have two rooms that share a bathroom and then we have community style bathrooms, kind of different formats. So you can visit all the housing styles online and see the layouts and, and learn more about the styles. Making a big campus smaller. So I mentioned that we're a mid-sized institution with over 24,000 undergraduate students. We have over 450 clubs and organizations you can get involved in. So while these numbers might seem overwhelming and big, what helps is by getting involved, you're starting to meet people and connect with people that you'll see on campus. So it helps make this big campus feel a little bit smaller and unique to you. There's tons of campus events that you can attend. There's a calendar that's always got something going on. And even in this kind of COVID virtual world, they're still hosting lots of events virtually that students can participate in. And again, our alumni associate does a lot of things with student alumni. So you can definitely participate in a student alumni association and events there to network. Sorority and fraternity life are very popular. Greek life is very popular on campus. Approximately 22% of our undergraduate students participate in Greek life. So about a quarter of our students do some sort of Greek life, which they have um, lots of involvement, lots of philanthropic activity um, to raise awareness and, and work for a good cause. And again, as I mentioned before, we are the Tennessee Volunteers. Programs abroad, studying abroad is such a unique, cool experience and something to do while you're in, uh, in university. So I definitely encourage you to check that out if you're interested. We study abroad in over 50 countries and there's short term trips to full length trips. So you can definitely see what's available. You can look at our website, of course, right now, no one's studying abroad, but we hope again to return to those trips soon. Okay, so I've shared a lot of information, a little bit about Knoxville, a little bit about our campus programs that we have. So now I want to share how to become a volunteer, or as we like to say, a VIP. Oop, there we go. So becoming a VIP, the application process. I'm sorry, let's get this right. Here it is. Okay, the application process. So we have two ways that you can apply. You can apply through our application by signing up and registering to be a VIP, or you can apply via the Common App. We do not have a preference. So if you're already on the Common App, that's fine to throw UT on there. If you've not started a Common App, go ahead and use our application. We really don't care. It's up to you. So a few new things this year. We are test optional. So you do not have to submit a test score. And it doesn't matter what program you're applying for. So you have the choice to submit a test score or to not. We are self-reporting this year. So you will self-report your academic record and upload an unofficial copy of your transcript. So after you fill out our application, you will then be prompted to self-report. And essentially what you will do is you will list your courses and your grades and upload that unofficial copy of your transcript. And that's what we will evaluate for your application. So we will take a look at that, see where um, everything falls and we will build a UT core GPA, which I will talk about in just a minute. We do have a $50 application fee and we do accept fee waivers if you qualify. And we are a holistic review process. So there's additional factors that you're gonna be required to submit that we will use for review. So all of our students are required to write one essay. If you choose to go test optional, you will be required to write an additional essay. So now you have two essays, okay? Then what we're gonna look at from all students is a listing of your extracurricular and leadership activities. So we want you to include what you've been involved in, how you've been engaged, what your role has been within those activities and your volunteer experience. What have you done to engage uh, in your community, at home, at school? What are things that you can share with us to show that you know what it means to be a volunteer? We will of course look at your high school curriculum and the rigor of the courses that you've taken. And we will look at that as we assess your application. Now, you can provide a recommendation letter if you would like. We recommend only about two if you want to choose that. Again, that's optional, not required. And then we also have an optional supporting statement. So the supporting statement is essentially an opportunity for you to let the admissions team know if there's something else you think we need to know as an applicant to UT, okay? So you'll again have one required essay to write, an additional essay if your test optional. If you feel that you need to add something to your application that's not in those essays, that's not in your extracurricular activities, or you need to explain something on your transcript, this gives you an opportunity to do it. So don't think you have to because it's optional. It's really only for you if you feel there's something else that we need to know that's not anywhere else clearly stated on your application. So it gives you another opportunity, okay? 
Okay, so that's a little bit about the application process. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about our UT Core GPA. So when you apply and you self-report, you're going to list your classes and your grades, and then we from that transcript will pull out 16 core classes. And those 16 core classes are listed on the screen. So we're going to look at four years of English, four years of math, three years of science, etc. Okay. Now these are all recommended courses, not required. So say you don't have two years of a foreign language. That does not mean you cannot apply to UT. That just means we will not use that in our calculation for your core GPA. Okay. Okay. So we're going to look at these 16 core classes. We are going to use a 4.0 scale and we are going to grant weight on the courses that you've taken. Okay, so when you list your classes on your self reporting, you're going to list them exactly how they are in your transcript and you're going to use the grading scale that that your school uses. Okay, and there'll be an opportunity for you to say I'm on a 4.0 scale. I'm on a 5.0 scale. Um, you will be able to, to input all that information. So we're going to pull these classes out and look at your grades and then we are going to grant weight. Okay, so for a regular class, for example, we're gonna do a quick math lesson here. Say you have an A in a regular course. Okay, that's four points. If it's an honors class or an advanced honors course, that's gonna be 0.5 additional weight. So that A now becomes a 4.5. If it's an AP class, IB, Cambridge, or dual enrollment, and you're taking it through your community college, you're gonna get one point additional weight, bringing that 4.0 A now to a five point. So that's going to work in your favor when we calculate a GPA. This GPA that we grant you is what we're going to use for admissions decisions and then scholarship decisions, which we're going to talk about next. So again, looking at those 16 core classes and granting weight on a 4.0 scale, that's how we're going to calculate a GPA. So when I reference scholarships coming up, um, that's the GPA that we're going to use. Okay. Now let's talk about the volunteer value, what it costs to come to UT as an out-of-state student and what opportunities you have to bring that cost down. So for my out-of-state students, the estimated cost of attendance um, is going to fall at just over 31,000. Okay, so 31,684 is your tuition and fees. Room and board is at 11,482. Now that's going to be for all of our students in state, out of state, and that's going to be a standard kind of room average. So again, I mentioned there's four housing styles. They're all going to be different price ranges. So depending on if you want a suite option with like a private bathroom, that's going to cost you a little bit more. Um, but this is kind of a base average rate of what our students pay for room and board. So essentially that brings you to just over $43,000 for my out of state students. Okay, so for my Illinois residents, you're looking at 43,166. This is what I like to call the sticker price. This is before you file your FAFSA and this is before any of our institutional or competitive scholarships. Okay, so now let's talk about scholarships. Out of state scholarships. Now, as I mentioned, we are test optional. Okay, so you have the choice to submit a test or not. This scholarship that you're seeing on your screen is if you submit a test score. Okay, so let's talk about that first. So if you submit a test score, you can find yourself on this grid and see what annual amount you would get. These scholarships are renewable for four years while you're at UT. All you have to do while you're at UT is maintain a 3.0 GPA, full-time enrollment, and don't get in trouble, okay? We do super score. So if you've taken the ACT or SAT multiple times, we will take your highest scores from each subject test and grant you a super score composite score. So again, this works in your favor as well. Now looking at the GPA, we're utilizing the UT core GPA that we calculated. If you meet a 3.6 UT core GPA, you will be looked at for this scholarship. Then your next criteria, so we're at 3.6, the next criteria is gonna bump to you need at least a 24 ACT or an 1160 SAT. So that's, I'm looking right here in the middle of the bottom screen. So if you, or the bottom chart, sorry. So if you, qualify there, you're going to get $4,000 off of that 43 and you'll get that renewable for four years. So 16,000 over four years. Okay. So that's our base rate. It's going to go up depending on GPA range and depending on test score. Now that's our Tennessee Explorer scholarship. If you bump into the next grid, you're going to fall into our volunteer scholarship program. So for this, we need at least a 3.8 UT core GPA. 
and then we need at least a 28 ACT or a 1300 SAT. If you meet that qualification, you're automatically going to get $10,000, okay, off of that 43. And you're going to get that all four years. You have the potential to get 15,000 or 18,000 annually. So again, you'll find yourself on this grid. Now, I understand that some of my students might not have had the opportunity to test yet, so you're not sure. Remember, you can go test optional, okay? I have a scholarship program opportunity for you as well. And the good news is, is you can always submit a test score later, okay? So if maybe if you have a test coming up here in September or October, which I know some of my Illinois students do, um, you can go test optional, apply, get your application in, and then when you get that score back, send it our way and we can evaluate. Now, once we see a score, though, we can't unsee it. So if you apply to us with a test score, that's that's kind of it. We've seen that test score. Or you can go test optional with the option to submit the test score later. Okay. Either way, if you don't submit a test score or you do, you can always upgrade that test score. Okay. So if you go and you apply with a test score and you say you retest in January and it bumps you up on this grid, submit us that test score and then we can bump you up on the grid. Okay. Uh, also remember that we do super score, so it's kind of in your best interest to submit the score anyways if you have chosen to go with a test um, because we can pull out your highest grade, uh, highest score to give you that super score. Okay, hope all that made sense. I will put my contact information at the end of this so you can always reach out. So again, if you submit a test score, you can easily find yourself on this grid to see what you will get. If you do not submit a test score, you may qualify for our Beacon Scholarship. Okay, so this is for my students who choose to go test optional. If you have a minimum 3.8 UT core GPA, you will be considered for this Beacon Scholarship. And it shares here what we're going to be looking at. So the scholarship committee will be looking at outstanding academic achievement, extracurricular engagement, demonstrated leadership, and commitment to your communities. And again, communities that could be uh, where you're living, your school, your church, your home life. We want to see your engagement and your intention, okay? Now, this is all part of your application to admission. So you want to make sure that you include these things, this academic achievement, extracurricular engagement on that application. So don't sell yourself short because that will also be utilized to review for this test optional scholarship. The range for awards for the Beacon Scholarship is going to be from 4,000 to 18,000. So it is mirroring the test score scholarships. Okay, but again, the range is going to be reviewed by a committee. Your application will be reviewed and then uh, an award amount may be received. Okay, so we do have an option if you go test optional. Now, we also have competitive scholarships that you can apply for, and then there's our honors program programs. So as you fill out the application, if you apply by our early action deadline of November 2nd, okay, so our early action deadline is Monday, November 2nd, if you apply by then, when you submit your application, you will get an additional scholarship application to complete for our competitive scholarships, okay? So within that, you can complete that application. That is due by December 15th. That's why you have to get in by our November 2nd application deadline. And then within that competitive scholarship, you will have an essay to write, and there is a required recommendation on that. So it's not the same optional recommendation that's on your application. That's an option to you. If you choose to do the competitive scholarship, you have to write and upload a recommendation to that application. Okay. So the competitive scholarship apply by November 2nd. Scholarships, plural, excuse me. We do have four honors and scholars programs that our students can uh, apply for essentially. It does not require a separate application. Uh, essentially, when you again apply for admission to the university, you will note if you're interested in one of three programs. Okay, so follow me here because I know I say four programs. We have the Chancellor's Honors, the Honors Leadership, and the 1794 Scholars. You will have your choice on your college application to say, I'm interested in one of these three and select which ones you're interested in. The Haslam Scholars, those are our top scholars. We select 15 yeah. students, one five. Uh, one five students a year for that. So that is a, a very limited program that you will not note on your application. When we get your application, the Honors and Scholars uh, College will review who's eligible for that and you will be contacted. So we need a minimum 3.8 UT core GPA for you to be considered for any of these programs. Okay. 
And then with that 3.8 UT core GPA, we will evaluate, our honors college will evaluate. Now, if you wanna submit a test score, you need a 28 minimum, which is a 1300 SAT. For the Haslam, they are a 31 ACT requirement, 1420. So again, those applicants will be reviewed based on your application. Again, you can be test optional. If you're test optional, they're looking for that 3.8 UT core GPA for review, okay? So let's talk about those deadlines a little bit more because that's obviously very important and we wanna make sure that um, we're getting that information in when you need to. Okay, sorry, I keep going to hit my button, but my mouse is working better, so, okay. Important dates. Hopefully my seniors know that file, uh, you can file your FAFSA starting October 1st, okay? And then our priority FAFSA file date is February 1st of next year. Our early action application deadline is Monday, November 2nd. Okay, so what this means, if you apply by our early action deadline, you will receive an admissions decision mid-December, okay? So early action gets you a mid-December decision. It also gets you eligible to complete the competitive scholarship application, okay? So it gives you time to do that. If you apply by December 15th, you will be considered for our institutional scholarships. So the volunteer and explore and the beacon scholarship I shared, okay? You have to apply by December 15th to be eligible for those. If you apply after December 15th, those scholarships are off the table, okay? If you apply by December 15th, you will receive your decision in mid-February if you've been admitted or not, okay? You do need to pay attention to deadlines for certain programs. I do know with nursing, for example, they do not accept applicants after December 15th. Um, some programs, architecture might require you to apply by November 2nd by our early action. So my best advice is really, I would aim for that Monday, November 2nd early action deadline. I would try to get that application in and complete because again, that gives you an opportunity to uh, complete these uh, competitive scholarships, and it just makes sure you've met deadlines if you're applying to any programs that have a supplemental application review, okay? So definitely wanna get you in um, by that date. But again, bottom line, December 15th, uh, you want your application in by then. Okay, so our campus is open to visitors. You can go to our website at visit.utk.edu and apply for visits then, okay, there, excuse me. Um, we are limiting our campus tour size with COVID. Um, so dates are filling up really fast and we are only planning about a month out. So currently our October calendar is open. Um, probably in the next week or two, we'll open up our November calendar, but you can get on that website and look for a date and come do a campus tour. Uh, now, because things are a little different with COVID, uh, when you apply for a visit, or excuse me, when you register for a visit, you will receive an information session emailed to you. Um, we are not doing information sessions um, inside buildings where we have students together um, and, and families together. So you will receive that information session virtually and you'll be able to watch that before your visit. And then you will be taken on a campus tour. Now there's also a link that you will receive that talks about academic appointments. So if you want to meet with an academic college, there are different options. Some are meeting with, students and families in person, and some are doing virtual Zoom appointments, and then some are doing information sessions that you can watch. So you'll wanna click on that link and see what opportunities the college that you're interested in is offering, okay? We will be hosting lots of different virtual events coming up this fall. So there's gonna be a big open house event that you can do virtually. Um, there's an honors and scholars event to learn more about those programs. So definitely check out that. Uh, we will also be hosting a multicultural event to learn about opportunities that students can have while on campus. Um, so keep checking your email. If you have not registered to be a VIP, a Vol in Progress, make sure you do that and join our mailing list. And that way you can stay in the know on all of these, of these virtual visits. We will also be hosting, probably in November, to be determined, um, an event for my Midwest students. So you definitely wanna check that out again. And um, it'll be myself and a few other UT, uh, of our UT family will be participating in that as well. So um, keep an eye out for that. Again, sign up for that VIP email list, okay? So we definitely want you to come visit, check out the virtual options online and that is my contact information. So make sure you take that information down. Um, 
again, I'm the Midwest recruiter. I'm based here in central Illinois. So I know I've got quite a few students in the Chicagoland area. And I've got quite a few students um, down in southern Illinois. Um, go Cards. And um, right here in the middle of the state where I'm at. I'm again right here in the Peoria area. And so I know I've met with a few of you um, virtually uh, and through email as well. So please feel free to reach out. That is my cell phone. I am completely fine with texting. You can call um, and then of course email me. So I try to respond within 24 hours. I'm doing a lot of these virtual visits these days, so I'm not always answering my phone. Um, so texting and email is probably the best way to get a hold of me, uh, but I do try to respond within 24 hours. So please feel free to reach out. I am here to help and so happy to do so, okay? So um, I do also like to highlight this last picture here at campus because it is one of my favorites. So there's Nayland Stadium, here's campus, right in the middle there and kind of that circle drive is Ayers Hall. It's on top of the hill. It, you can't really see in the picture, but it is elevated. Um, that's where the College of Arts and Sciences, so our largest college, most of the classes are gonna be housed there. Um, and then over in this region is where we're building our new nuclear engineering building with new makers lab. Um, of course, the Tennessee River, again, right along, super accessible. And then you can start to see some of the little foothills of the mountains. And again, Great Smoky Mountains, less than 45 minutes away. So definitely opportunities for you to explore um, both on our campus in Knoxville and then around um, the most visited national park in the United States. So I am going to stop there and I'm gonna take a look at the chat. And I don't think I see anything in the chat or the Q&A. So um, please feel free to reach out. Again, that is my cell phone, text, call, email. I'm happy to work with you. I've been doing virtual high school visits. So check with your school counselor uh, and your online portal to see if I'm visiting your school and I'm happy uh, to meet with you then. And then of course you can always reach out um, to me personally and I'm happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment too, absolutely. And this presentation will be available online later. StriveScan is posting all of the presentations um, once the, this event wraps up. So you'll be able to see the, um, all the presentations online, including this one. Yeah, and there again, there's more virtual UT uh, programs that you can watch um, that are already kind of filmed and you can do live stream as well on our website if you go to the visit website. So good question. Okay. Thank you for, for joining me, everyone. Thank you, Courtney. And everyone at home, it's really hard to present when we cannot see you. So right now, give Courtney some positive vibrations. Give her a big round of applause for doing such a great job of presenting and sharing this great opportunity with all of our Illinois students. Thank you very much, Courtney. Um, remember, there are lots more of these sessions Thank you for joining us. There will be a quick survey. If you stick around, please, just four quick questions so we can make this programming better for other students. Um, sign up for more sessions, iacac.org. And yes, recording will be available of this in all sessions. Thank you for participating. Thank you, Courtney. We hope to see you all at a future session.